Co-talkers and Midolche shake up today's metagame breakdown. Make sure you guys smash your blue crap out of the subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. Alright, the first list we have here is Ruben Fergurdo, or Fergurito's, uh winning Winamat list out of uh, the extravaganza for, I believe it was Mexico, don't quote me on that. Right, there were a couple of them this past weekend. But this is Code Talkers, ladies and gentlemen. And I always find it very interesting to kind of see what code talkers are doing this one's actually main decking freaking grand horn heaven during your opponent's main phase when they would special summon a monster monsters they gave that summon you destroy the monster then your opponent draws a card and then you end their main phase once and then your opponent can't even get an attempt to break your board yeah sure they draw a card but like you just push them into battle phase and then back to main phase too so like you go first build a board and you just laugh at your opponent because you just grand horn heaven them this is actually not a horrible idea but, what are we doing here with this deck? So, we have triple copies of Code Generator. The cool thing with this, uh, what is it, the Code Radiator, uh, these guys can all be used in hand along with Code or Microcoder. Um, basically, just allows you to have easier access points. If you open up like a whole hand of these guys, you think, ah, oh, I can just link climb up through my hand. It's actually really good. And they all have bonus effects, which actually are really good. We have the one cyber gadget, it's gonna be your token generator. Dot Scraper, your two-time extender. Two copies of Nightmare Corruptor Ibley. Now, I know a lot of people like playing three of this. Two doesn't seem horrible to me in terms of, you know, just generalized deck building purposes. I think you can get away with two of this. Now, we have triple copies of our normal summon search for pretty much whatever we want for our deck. Pretty good. We have triple copies of the Microcoder. And then we have two copies of the Parallax Seed. Once again, I never see these builds playing three of these. Right? It's always been two, 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 two for as long as I can remember. So, perfectly works out. And then we're playing one copy of the Swap Cleric. If this card is sent to the graveyard's link material, you can have that link monster lose 500 attack and then draw a card. So, you would, you would looking at this card, you're probably like, wait a minute. So I lose 500 attack and I get to draw one? So it's self replaces, you can use it as a link material anytime, and it's also cybers. It's actually not horrible. It's basically, it, it's kind of your, I want to say your replacement for not having Heat Soul at the moment. It just gives you the ability to draw into a trap card after you've pretty much filtered through all of your options. We have triple copies of Cyanet Codex, triple copies of Cyanet Mining, Triple copies of Pot of Desires, two copies of Anti Spell Fragrance, two Crackdown, two copies of Sinet Conflict, triple Grand Horn of Heaven, triple copies of Rivalry, and triple copies of the Solemn J Man. So we're just a back row control deck that makes a big board, right? It's pretty much how this works. And we have two copies of Transcode Talker, one copy of Trisbania, one Talkback Lancer, two copies of Splash Mage, one Security Dragon, one copy of Link Karibo. One Link Spider, one Link Garibo, one Firewall Dragon, one X Code Talker, one Code Talker Inverted, one Code Talker, and one Access Machine wrapping up the extra deck here. Side deck. We have Triple Cobb is Lance, you have two copies in the barrel, Triple Cobb is a Book of Moon. Actually, kind of interesting seeing these on the side. Huh. We really are going for just build a board, laugh at the opponent. I can't believe we're actually trying to play Code Talkers like a control deck. I love it. We have two Dark Hole, one Mind Control, one Regeki, and triple copies of Twin Twister wrapping up basically control code talkers. Like I said, you make a board, laugh at your opponent. Also, you know, under the conditions of what rivalry, anti spell fragrance, Grand Horn to Heaven, like your opponent's not going to have a fun time. It's also not like you're not going to have sign that conflict backing you up. You know what I mean? So you do have multiple layers of protection for your deck, especially when you can resolve Cleric to draw an additional resource. All right, next up is the Candy Treats. This was Luca Clamino's third place list. Now, straight off the bat here, that's 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 D-Shifter, ladies and gentlemen. That means that we can do some shenanigans here. Huh. So we don't have to worry about those bad monster cards that we don't want to see in the graveyard. No, 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 no. We can just straight D shifter turn one and proceed to full combo on our opponent. Okay, sounds good to me. Um, not a bad way to go about things. I, I didn't think I would ever see shifter in middle Shay, at least anytime soon for like the build a board variant. But okay, so we have triple copies of shifter, triple copies of Angeli. 
two copies of the Hoot Hoot, triple copies of Magilene, two copies of Messengelato, triple copies of Pudding Susior, and one copy of Pudding, says. And then we have triple copies of Nibiru, one Called by the Grave, triple copies of Forbidden Droplet, one Harpy's Feather Duster, one Instant Fusion, one copy of Chateau, one Salon, one Ticket, and triple copies of Prosperity. I know a few people have been talking about wanting to bump Salon up to multiples. Um, I don't think that that's a horrible idea. I guess it depends on your build. Like, you can go towards two Salon if you want to make sure that you can see it. Um, if not, it's not much of an issue. I mean, keep in mind, Messenger Lotto is not a once per turn. So, <laughs> you should be resolving and capitalizing on, like, the best effects that you can here. So... That's the thing. Um, we also have triple copies of Infinite Permanence. I'm very curious to know how this worked out for him. So many people pretty much just tossed Imperm aside and been like, nee, it's not good, but we're seeing it here. We have two copies of Promenade and triple copies of Solemn Steve Reich. Actually, down here, we have the two copies of Fresh to Start, the one Link Karibo, the one Axis Machine, the triple copies of the Glass Filet, triple copies of Tiaramisu, two copies of Shock Lala Mode with the one Omega, the one Millennium Eyes, and the one copy of Anintis. Side here we have Triple Ansia, Triple Draw and Lockbird, Triple Cosmic Cyclone, Triple Lightning Storm, and Triple Copies of Goes in Match. Wrapping up Madolshi. Now keep in mind, a lot of the earlier variants were like super gung ho and playing extravagance. I think that we've pretty much gone past that point now of Madolshi doesn't really want the second card all that much. I feel like just being able to get the one resource that you need to basically start combo is good enough. So, it's my opinion, I would pretty much go with that. Um, also, the instant fusion in here to get to the Millennium Eyes to stop any potential hand trap that your opponent might have against you actually isn't a horrible idea. Um, obviously, it's limited to one, you're not going to see it all the time, but in the games that you can actually see this will actually put you in a better position in the long run, which is also a good thing, all right? Like, being able to see your key hand traps or your key hand trap preventers along the way, you know, keep in mind the instant fusion basically is a cult by the grave at this point. So, it's quite interesting. And the last list we have for you guys today is Jose Morando's Phantom Knight list. Made top eight out of his event. Now, interesting enough here, uh, this deck is playing the Phantasmes. We've kind of started to see Phantasme kind of fall out of the format at the moment. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, depending on the level of competition you're playing at, if you're expecting a lot of Dragon Link, obviously play the Phantasmes, all right? That's what they're good for. Um, how good and consistent they are in every other match, I mean, they're falling a little bit off, but nonetheless here, some interesting stuff. So we have triple copies of Astral Blossom and Joy of Spring. One copy of Sia. Then we have one Jackalope, one Tsuchinoko, triple copies of Phantasme for that draw power, one Graph, triple copies of Kage Musha Knight, one Tracker, one Wielder, one Ancient Cloak, one Ragged Gloves, triple copies of the Silent Boots, triple copies of the Torrent Scales, triple copies of a Normal Summon to attempt to win the game, if you don't get Ash. <laughs> we have one Dark Magician and one Red Eyes. Spells here, we have one Call by the Grave, two copies of Cosmic Cyclone, one Monster Reborn, one Red Eyes Fusion, one copy of Rota, triple copies of Triple Tactical Talents, triple copies of Fogblade, and one copy of Phantom Knight Wings. Extra deck here, we have one Rusty, one Verte Machine, one Nightmare Unicorn, one IP Mascarena, one Cherubini, one Apollosa, one Linglong, uh, two copies of Breaksword, one Raider's Knight, one Levier, the one Downer Magician, the one Zeus, the one Arc Rebellion, and the one copy of the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. We have Triple Lancia here, one Pankratops, Triple Copies of Droll and Logbird, Triple Nibiru, two Twin Twisters, two Andy Spell Fragrance, and one copy of Imperial Order wrapping this list up. Keep in mind we're not playing the Rank of Magic Quick Launch, uh, well, the, the new one, the, I mean, I can't remember the name of it. It's the new Phantom Knight one that they just got. I think a lot of people just kind of are like, eh, it, it's good, but understandably, I guess. It's not like you can't just rank up through Raider's Knight and just disrupt the opponent. So that's actually kind of interesting to note. So some builds go more towards that. I feel like it just kind of bulks down on more dead bricks for your deck. So, but Code Talkers, ladies and gentlemen, some Madolche and some Phantom Knights for all of you metagame supporters out there. What do you guys think about these lists? Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. Smash your everything curve out subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later on today with some more cool, awesome content. Peace out, guys. Have a good one. Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end without you guys' support. Well, 
I would probably be doing trouble shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out Vanquil 40 for all of your card fight Vanguard content brought to you by Mcol 40 And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out mcolgames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.